everyone, I'm Allison and I'm from Better Half Reviews and we're going to be doing a special top three list, or actually two of them. Uh, we're going to be talking about top three books that would be great to become board games and then top three board games that we would like to see books. And I am joined today, joined today by a guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Oh, you have to have the board game librarian, of course, with you on today. So. For those who don't know, and I talk about books and board games so much, I just make people just want to go to sleep. I'm <laughs> Jen, the board game librarian. Um, really awesome to be on with you, Allison. This is, it's, I found out you're living in Connecticut, so in the after times, this has to happen. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that would be fun. One yes, day. <laughs> Yes. But yeah, you can check her out. She's got stuff on YouTube and Instagram, and I see her on Facebook if you're in any of the board game groups, or also on Dice Tower. She's a contributor there. It's been three years. I don't know how time has, fl has flown by so quickly. It's, it's wild. Um, and we may, be, we may have a pesty a kitty cat who joins us. He also wants to be famous, like, like us. So we have That's to align, right. right? When you're talking about <laughs> cats and books, it's just... True. Just go together. Yes, very true. All right, so we're going to start with our top three books that we would like to see board games. So would you start us off? Sure. I didn't put mine in any particular order. I don't know if you did. I just kind of went through books that I'd read and made a list. Um, one of the ones that I've read recently is Circe by Madeline Miller. So she has a background in... Um, ancient history and um so she's written this book about the demigoddess Circe and she I, some of us know of her from Wonder Woman that she shows up as a villain in Wonder Woman um and she shows up in um Jason and the ooh, yep it's gonna come to me later <laughs> you can fill in the blank in the comments below um so she's, she's been kind of maligned of sorts in mythology, like a lot of our ancient women have been, unfortunately. Um, but I think people love games about the gods and goddesses. So I don't, I don't know how this could be a game. That, that's for someone out there to take this, this bubble, right? We're going to Dumbledore these things and they can take it. It's a really fantastic book too. It's very lyrical, um, maybe even as an RPG storytelling yeah it'd be interesting yeah I, I had never heard of that one so that would be cool to kind of see what could happen with that someone in the comments give us your ideas for these by the way yeah throughout all of them if you have any ideas throw them out this is yeah. fun <laughs> we, love them. we love interaction so how about you um so i guess i didn't necessarily put them in any order mostly uh, maybe my number one would be like one of my top choices but yeah um, so I have a really hard time making my list for the books to board games. Okay. I thought it was going to be easy, and I was like, shoot, this is hard. So <laughs> this is what I came up with. I'm probably going to think of something else later, but oh well. <laughs> so my number three is um, Aragon by Christopher Paolini, or Paolini, I'm sorry oh. if I'm saying that wrong. Um, so I, I read a lot of series, so I was like, shoot, this is hard with the series, but I was thinking of the aspect of with Aragon, he he learns about you know having magic and getting a dragon and everything like that. So I thought maybe it would be like a, a fantasy game where you're trying to like hone your magic and you know train your dragon and upgrade things and try to be like the best of the best. So that's kind of what I was thinking about with Aragon. So upstairs in our closet when the movie came out, have you seen the movie? Yes. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Ooh. Um. They did a, um, like a movie game of it, and oh, mm. really, really. No. Yeah. Good. Well, that's, um, that's about as good as the movie too. <laughs> fair. Fair. Also fair. Um. He has a. Did you know he has a new book out? So you're gonna get me going, and I'll just I'll talk all night. He has a a new book out for adults. A new fantasy book. Christopher Paul. Paulini, we're doing great with it. Um, yes, we are. <laughs> so yeah, no. I, anytime you can, anytime you could put dragons in a game, I think I'm sold. 
it's all yep, good. dragons, magic, you know. Yeah, it sounded like a good plan. Oh. So yeah, that was my number three with Aragon. Very cool. Um, I also somewhat recently read a book, which is part of a series um, you might like, um, called The Invisible Library by, oh, here we go, Genevieve Cogman. She's a British uh, author. She is also really into gaming. She does Ooh. RPGs. Um, so the premise of the Invisible Library series is, oh boy, <laughs> it was just full <laughs> on detail, oh. um, is that you are a librarian in like this massive eternal library where it can take you a week to, oh geez, this will be great bloopers, right? Um, <laughs> to get from one end of the library to the other and you can time jump and do really awesome things kind of like a steampunk Victorian flavor to it. Cool. Um, so the appealing part to me that would be good for a game would be kind of the time jumping and going through different parts of history and maybe solving cases and trying to catch the bad guys. Um, yeah, just and seeing the library too. That sounds like a cool idea. I think that would be really good, you know, work for a game like different aspects you could pick but yeah definitely like the time jumping would be really cool yeah uh, yeah there's not a lot of games that do time jumping well and my next one has time jumping in it too Ooh. so all right so that was the invisible library who was that by because i i, I want to write this down uh genevieve cogman so it's a series so you you may have yourself a new series to read there i love series <laughs> basically I yeah i don't mean to like always pick series but it just kind of happens so all right and they're comforting, I think, you know? Yeah. Um, okay. So my number two, I was kind of surprised that I picked this, but then I was like, oh, I could make a decent game. Um, I actually picked Divergent from our, by uh, Veronica Roth. Oh, And yeah. so my thought would be like, well, I, I guess in the movie, it will sorry, not the movie, the books, whatever. There's both. Um, you're, there's this character and everything is like a dystopian society so everybody's split into these different factions and the main character chooses a new faction when she comes of age and she has to go through all these tests and things to be mm -hmm. accepted so i yep. thought it'd be kind of cool to be like um you're going through you're picking your new faction and mm -hmm. you have to go through the test to try to see if you're at the top and um everybody could compete against each other and then um, you could also use all the different factions and have different challenges and be like a different type of game depending on which one you choose for that round of gaming. Yeah, yeah and then doesn't the series, well, there's this potential spoilers, I guess. So if you <laughs> read the series or and are currently reading the series, doesn't it end kind of like with a big epic war at the end to the series? <sighs> the series just does not end very well. Okay, I've heard that from a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. I, I really liked the first couple and then the, the last book. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not even going to talk about it. No. <laughs> I feel like I about Mockingjay, too. Some people are like, Bleh. I still liked it. You did? Oh, good. Yeah, I, I, like, I like Hunger Games better than Divergent, but I thought of Divergent with a better game premise and less death compared to Hunger Games, so <laughs> I went with that. Us children fighting each other for battle to the end. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, my final pick is um, a science fiction title, which kind of is, I, I really liked it. Um, it's called Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. So Blake Crouch, um, people know him for um, oh the Pines series. That's Wayward Pines. That's on TNT, I think. Um, so the premise of Dark Matter is it's this very intelligent scientist who basically has a premise that there's multiverses and it's a Schrodinger's cat kind of situation. And he is able to live throughout these different universes and these different versions of himself. Well, in the meanwhile, um, he gets catapulted into these universes because a version of himself takes over in his current reality. Um, so it's almost like a chase that's going on. Um, 
it's a survival story too so almost kind of dead of winter in some ways um it, it's yeah and the at the heart of the story it's a love story he's trying to get back to his wife and son um mm -hmm. so i really like that one it had a lot of complex things um and the, the idea of a multiverse to me is very fascinating. Um, the things that we don't know that are, could be a possibility. So. That's cool. I'm like, I think I've heard the name of the series, but like, I don't, I have never like looked into it, but I'm like, oh, that sounds familiar. So maybe I'll look into that. It was, it was, a, science fiction isn't necessarily my genre of choice. Oh. Um, in a couple of years back, I, for the, for work, had picked this for a book club. And I read it with a lot of older folk who are very set in their ways and what they read. And when I throw out something as weird as science fiction, they, they kind of, <laughs> they, they really liked it. Um, so it, it's genre. It's not something that fits in a genre. Um, so yeah, kind of post-apocalyptic in some ways. Um, so, yeah. All right. That's cool. Um, so my number one pick um, is probably kind of higher up there on my list of like favorite books. And it's a different type of book than I normally read. Mm -hmm. So I'm usually all like fantasy, adventure, sometimes sci-fi and uh, young adult stuff, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, this one is a historical fiction slash thriller suspense book. Mm -hmm. It is The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. Okay. So I was thinking a couple things. So, okay, I guess I should do background because you obviously know about it. Um, so in this book, um, there's a couple of different main characters in different times. And the whole thing is like, you're wondering if Dracula is real and there's this spooky mm -hmm. stuff going on. And it's like national treasure in the way of like looking and searching for clues. But, um, this book is so good and it's so crazy. And so I was like, it could maybe be like um, an exit game where you're trying to find all the clues or it could be like a legacy or campaign game as you're working through and trying to not get, um, you know, get got by the vampires or supposed vampires. But yeah, I, I thought this would be kind of interesting to see it as a game. Yeah, I, I think I was trying to find, so I haven't read that book, but of course know about it and the premise and i think i was trying to find a game that i could pair it with for board game breakfast so i could read it but it's it's a commitment it's a it's a chunk it book and um, it has a lot of like historical stuff that usually yeah. you think is kind of boring but once you get into it you're like oh this is so cool <laughs> yeah no that's that's interesting yes yeah oh that's cool you can even have like a continuation of fury of dracula but like in modern day yeah, something like that. Like, I, I thought about it. I was like, maybe I shouldn't put this because of Fury of Dracula. But I'm like, no, I'm still going to keep it because I think it would be different enough. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's my pick. And I, I really need to finish rereading it. Um, I was We started it, my husband and I, I was like, you need to read this book. So we started reading it together. But it's really hard to read a book with someone. Okay, like, so one day yeah. I'll get through it again. <laughs> and one day I'll actually get through it. So <laughs> Yes, do it. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So, um, do you have any honorable mentions for the books to board games? No, I, I read such a huge variety of stuff just because I run a lot of varieties of book clubs and I, I read just about everything. Um, and with this past year, I've been on a romance kick. <laughs> <laughs> so, most of those don't translate well to board games, so I didn't have anything. And like some of my favorite books, like Anna Green Gables, I mean, like you know, that's going to appeal to a very specific yeah <laughs> audience. That's fine. I love that. Um, how about you? Um, the only uh, I thought of kind of two. Like one I thought would be fun for kids would be Fable Haven, mm. um, because it's very fantasy and like fairies and mythical creatures. Um, I thought maybe something along the lines of like stuffed fables because there's several books of Fable Haven, so maybe like different chapters could be going through some of the books and the adventures that they do. So that was one of my thoughts. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, and that's by Brandon Mole, by the way. I forgot to say. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I thought of Poldark. I haven't read the books. I've watched the show. But then I saw that the Kickstarter for, what is it? Uh, Tinner's Tale or something. I'm like, I read it and it's like mining and stuff for copper in Cornwall. I'm like, okay, well, that's Poldark. Never mind. <laughs> okay. So that'll, so, hmm. I should maybe reach out to them and say, hmm. Poldark. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Spring um, I love it. Yeah. So now let's shift gears into games that we would love to see as books. So what is your first pick? Um, my first pick is one that we picked up somewhat recently, and I have such a huge fondness for the, the original version. Um, but the original version to me reminds me of um, Shirley Jackson's The Haunting of Hill House. This is Mysterium Park, however. Um, I don't know if you've gotten to play it yet, but it's got that circus feel to it. And I'm not necessarily a circus person, but I, I just like the cast of characters that they have in there I, is really imaginative. And I think itself, like when you're playing the game, there's just that storytelling aspect that goes on with it too. And in, in your head while you're working, not as the ghost, you're, you're one of the investigators, I guess. Um, you're already attributing a lot of, you're making up your the backstories for these people. Um, and I just love the artwork that's in Mysterium Park and Mysterium too. So I, I think it's great. So I'd love to see that. Even if it was just a, like a short little horror, mm -hmm. like a little novella horror. Um, yeah. That's when fun. I when I was making my list, Mysterium was one of my choices, like when I was first starting out, but I didn't end up picking it, but I'm glad that you did. Yeah, oh it yeah, I my husband is a really good ghost. Um and I'm not always a good receiver <laughs> for clues on my end. I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you pick? Um, so I picked the Pandemic Legacy games. Mm. Um, so I've played through the first two and I'm currently playing through the newest one, Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. Yep. And I love the story that develops in it and it's kind of interesting with, you know, figuring out all the clues and like reading it and learning about it as you go and like the betrayals and stuff like that. So um, I think that would make for a, a good kind of little book there and you could even do a series because there's one, two and zero or three but yeah so i thought of pandemic legacy season one two and zero the the latest one it's cold war correct um yeah 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 that would that would be a really good book um you could get james bond going there are spies right i mean oh yeah it can be a thing <laughs> um my next picked i don't I wanted something different from the other ones that I had picked. And I, one of my favorites from last year was smartphone. So to me, it was almost more like a corporate thriller of sorts where like you could have all the smartphone companies and they're all battling it out together and there's intrigue and espionage going on. So apparently I like espionage. Um, <laughs> and I don't know, just kind of a who ends up being the top one um, and like the story of cell phones, even a nonfiction book, the story of cell phones. Because um, we all have some smartphones now. So <laughs> that was like a random pick. I was like, that would be great as a book. Maybe. You never know. How's it going? Are you saying bad pick? He's, he's, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's saying excellent pick. <laughs> Nice. That's one that I haven't actually played. I have to admit, like, I never really looked into it because it just didn't look too interesting because of the subject matter. So I don't know, like, anything about the game other than it's about phones. It's, it's kind of an engine builder of sorts. Um, I mean, the theme is really dry of sorts. Mm. Um, but I like that it's unique. I mean, you are designing your own cell phone company, um, but it, it's really great at two players. Um, okay. 
So, okay. yeah. an, an unusual pick. Um, my second pick was Everdell. Oh, yes. so I mean, there are the the game. There's so many different characters, and in some of the expansions or whatever, they have little blurbs about different things in their history. And when you play the solo game, there's the evil Rugwort who um, is out there against you. And so I think it can make for like a really cute, fun little adventure novel. And you know, the perils of preparing for winter and the, the evil Rugwort and other stuff. So I thought it could be kind of cute and, and silly. I don't know. Oh, see, I went like, um, oh geez, the one with the rabbits. Watership Down. You mm. have, like all these cutesy little animals because they're all adorable and they're living together. And yes, it would it actually would be a really adorable children's picture book. Yeah, I was just thinking about that as I was talking about. It. I was like, it's got to have pictures. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, I do love Everdell. Um, Me too. <laughs> uh, oh, geez. Yeah, I gave up after Pearl Brook. I think we ran out of room in the base box, so I went. Um, my final pick is, it would have been my game of the year, but like Kickstarters and their dates, like they say 2019 on BGG, but they really came out in 2020, so you're really confused <laughs> to put them on. Um, my last one is Isle of Cats. <laughs> because... I'm just fascinated. You're pirates that are sailing to this island and you're saving the cats and you have to be fast and you, you're putting the families of the cats together and the cats are doing all these funny poses and things and why are you doing this? I need to know this story. I need someone to write this story down <laughs> <laughs> and how you've ended up on the Isle of Cats. Is it just cats? Are there humans? Is it I, I want to know. I want to know the. <laughs> I'm a crazy cat librarian and I'm not a stereotype at all. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be a good idea. You, could, you should write something down, figure it out. Yes, and it's adjacent to the Everdell Island. <laughs> the, the cats ransack all the little critters. Anyway. <laughs> That's what um, the right? <laughs> it did. <laughs> um, so then, uh, my number one pick is a Ryan Lockett game because I love Ryan Lockett games and it's got to be on you know every one of my lists apparently. Um, I picked Above and Below. Oh. So I, I considered Near and Far but I was like that has more of like a you know story figured out. And Above and Below has little blip like bits and pieces here and there. As you're playing the game you like have little scenarios but I think it'd be more interesting to see above and below as like a cohesive story because a lot of his um a lot of his games have story modes in it so i thought that would be you know kind of cool um and plus you would have like really cool cover artwork and stuff like that because you know it's ryan lockett yes yeah i i could see any of his games really lending themselves and becoming a series too of books and just, you know, the next one being Islebound, your adventures on the high seas, and um, his new one, Sleeping Gods. I don't know who had kickstarted that and gotten it yet. Um, I'm waiting for it to come. Ah, yes. Yeah, all of his artwork is just so imaginative, and I think just it draws you in. Mm -hmm. For sure. So, I love that we picked different things. I know, we did. Um, did you have any honorable mentions for... This one? I didn't. I, I, I think I came to my three and I was like, I'm good. You're so good. <laughs> I had like a list of like 10 games. I'm like, shoot, I gotta narrow this down. Oh, wow. Um, so I, I, I left two. I said Paladins of the West Kingdom mm -hmm. because there's like a lot of different things going on. There's like attacking and there's like the monks who are converting and just there's tons of different characters that I think mm -hmm. could make it like, like an epic type of story. Hmm. And then I picked Rome. It's another Ryan Lockett game. But like, hmm. there's a lot of people who are wandering, who are kind of like, I don't know, in a trance or whatever, and they're lost. So it's like, what happened? How did that, how did people get lost? Maybe one person's not, and they're trying to help, you know, save the people. So that could be 
to hunt Dory. Paladins of the West Kingdom reminds me of that show that was on the History Channel with Mark Hamill about Crusaders. Oh, it's apparently too late at night and my brain doesn't, <laughs> doesn't function. Oh, again, comment below, people. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to look it up on IMDb after we're done and go, oh. <laughs> yeah, oh, so cool. hopefully you had fun. I'm, I'm glad that you collaborated and we talked about this because now I'm like, I've got some book recommendations. I've got some game <laughs> recommendations. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is just a bit of fun, you know, to see what could be. Um, so if anybody has other ideas of books that should be games, games that should be books, or filling the blank of things that we couldn't think of at the moment, let us know in the comments down below. Um, so Jen, do you want to tell us again where we can find your stuff? Uh, thank you. I'm glad that we able reconnected. Um, and it's, it's been fun having you. I don't do it like I used to. Um, favorite game Friday from like one of the OGs of sorts to see how favorite game Friday has really evolved over the years. Um, so it's, it's awesome how Roy has really changed it. Um, so um the board game librarian if you just type that into all the things um and on youtube the literary gamers what a surprise right <laughs> awesome. yeah and thank you for having me on no no problem and you're so close Woo! i know we can game together sometime yeah. yes one day <laughs> in the after times <laughs> yes <laughs> All right, everybody. So I hope you had a lot of fun. Again, comment down below if you have any ideas and I'll catch you next time. Happy gaming.